Hello, 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 hello! Welcome to How to DM the World. My name is Jacob E. Christensen. Jake sent. Enormous idiot. Jake. Ginormous asshole. And this over here is my friend Eric. Eric. Welcome to How to DM the World. So. Let's get going. This is our pilot episode. So. We are going to start every episode off with some type of question from preferably the audience. But today I brought in a little thing uh, from myself. Um, why do you DM? Why do you Dungeon Master, Eric? Why do you run games of D&D and other RPGs, primarily D&D? Why I do it? Yeah. <laughs> First and foremost, because I need to play some more. <laughs> and... Not a lot of people are interested in DMing. It's usually the hard task I hear. Yeah. Like you gotta do a lot of planning and you also gotta work up I'm I like world building, so that's just a side note and it helps me in a way. But I see a lot of people when I go around the forums or talk with people they're like, I don't like DMing because then I have to keep check of everything and I gotta make a story and if I don't have the time and I see a lot of people wor- worrying about it about it. Ugh. I started DMing because we didn't have one, right? Yeah. Like, we were like, we want to play D&D. Uh, who's got a DM? I, I think I could do it. Great, then I DMed. Yeah. And now, why do I DM? Because it is incredibly fun. Oh, there I are agree. so many... Uh, to me, it's a very... Um, like, it's one of those things that is a combination of a lot of things that I like. World building is one of them. I, I love, like, world building. It is so much fun. Um... I love telling stories. I love like getting in there and like building up to a climax and seeing that. But I like performing. I like making voices. I like like making jokes. I like killing you guys. Oh, but, oh, I see. But honestly, the reason I like really enjoy DMing is the same reason that I enjoyed playing music in front of people. The same reason I enjoy doing speeches. The same reason I enjoy any kind of performing. It's because I love inflicting emotions on you guys. Like yeah, to see people enjoy your work. Like not even enjoy. Like if whether you are scared or you are sad or you are angry or you're happy. Like what the fact that you are reacting to this imaginary world is the best thing to me. Uh, and that is so enjoyable. Like my favorite moment DMing uh, is without a doubt me talking to you and you being like. And I think I said. Are you ready for the next session? And you, like, without a beat, answered, Henry, like... <sighs> Henry gotta die! Yeah. That bitch. Like, no, Henry was like, yes. But, yes. but I gotta, gotta tell you something. Yeah. That naming of dragons, you know? My dragons have great <laughs> names. <laughs> it's the name, name Henry. I couldn't... Like, first off, of course I take no, it seriously. His name is not Henrik. His name is Heinrich. Heinrich. Heinrich auf die Desert. Still, I was just first time I read it. I was like, "Hmm, well." Also, because it's fucking Heinrich. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I was like, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> like, uh, but it's also I appreciate good, it. I, I, a I good gave them the n- names depending on the how they see themselves, right? Yeah, Friedrich because he's a very majestic person. Heinrich because he's an asshole. Like Eskimo because he's a fucking monster. Hydronak because he's a fucking monster. Darivan, because she was a fucking monster. Uh, I thoroughly Darivan, enjoyed... Darivan, the one who killed a person when he overdosed on drugs. Yeah. I still thoroughly enjoyed uh, Hydronax's death. It, yeah. it was a good... It was a good moment. Hydronax's death was a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Like... No. Uh, D- DMing is, like, to me, a combination of a lot of things I enjoy. And secondarily, it lets me play D&D more. Oh, indeed. It's like, uh, it's pretty hard to play D&D without a dun- dungeon master. Do you master. want to know what the most fun thing about D&D? It is you guys. Like, it's getting to make jokes with you and, like, my girlfriend and all the two friends and whoever we are playing with. It's just so much fun. Like, I, fi- I find the fun part in just watching people's way of working around problems and finding yeah. a solution to whatever they're doing yeah. and i remember this time where you go into a dungeon and you're like well there's a lot of 
things we don't usually recognize here. And I remember how the dungeons was actually shaped as a Rubik's Cube. So yeah, in- like one in- of these instead of uh, with rooms in- inside every cube. Instead of tinkering with it, you were just like, "Are we gonna pull everything?" And then you got cap- captured inside the dungeon yeah. without a way out, and then you just, well, fuck us then. Yeah, like we fucking didn't know what to do, right? Like, um, it it was a great moment. <laughs> yeah, like that is the most fun part, uh, being a DM, like having a problem with no solution and just being like there you go and you just figure it out like <laughs> seeing characters interact is so much fun oh yeah indeed i i remember a time when uh it's one of the players in in his downtime he wanted to get serious and like yeah. i i want can i do a mini adventure with you eric and i'm like yeah sure okay, yeah. sure you can i i can do that it's like i want to travel are, oh. you, are you sure you want to travel yeah, yeah. I wanna is this the going to churches around the country? Yeah, this is the church. Yeah. So I have a lot of religions because I like to world build. So um, he ended up traveling to a country he had heard of who was very religious and was very free-minded in what religion you chose to to be uh, under. So he went around churches and just he uh, just asked me to explain the religions of the different gods and people in essentially yeah. and he did he just i remember he ended up like finding this kid on the street and he's like do you have to play stay which my character is taking care of because he's a fucking idiot oh yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> but i remember he's like it is it, and he's like do you have a place no i don't and he's like oh well can't help you with that but um i can give you some money and that ended up with him adopting this child and basically kidnapping him to another country. Like, th- the best part of that was him arriving home and us sitting around the table having breakfast and him just arriving with a child. And like, and us hi, just, this is mine now. You weren't away for that long. No. <laughs> where, where did you get that child? Oh god. It was just so mm. I I think I'm on the l- lucky end of the stick with my players with you guys because yeah. you make up a lot of problems of your own. I I don't even need to find like conflicts half of the time you create yeah. them yourself. Like that that's what's fun for like us at least uh, most of our group is like we are characters. Like, what do we do? Like, let's fuck about. <laughs> yeah, I remember it ending. I up. am becoming a priest. Yeah, and you're not even a cleric. I should n- notify uh, the audience. Why? Well, why would I have to be a cleric to be a priest? Yeah, but you just. You I am the classic lawful good rogue. Yeah, it's. That's a longer cl- story. Yeah, it's it's a long story. <laughs> Great. You know, I think that answers our first question of why we DM. So, for the heck of it. Let's go into our main topic. Who are we and what are our experiences? So, we're going to start off with how did we get into d and I remember that. That, that my uh, experience was, uh, particularly I have always read about it on the internet and been like, kind of exposed to it and like, oh, that's something nerds do. Um, which, funny enough, we had live action role played before we did D and D. Oh yeah, and a lot. I was always like, "Oh, D and D, that's the real nerds." <laughs> <laughs> we're not the real nerds. Yeah. We're running around in customs with <sighs> rubber swords and bashing each other but yeah. in the knees until they scream. And what really like uh, got me started was um, I went to gym, the gymnasium, and uh, one of my uh, classmates uh, called Rune. He's a wonderful guy. I haven't talked to him in a while, but he was like, we were talking about a lot of fantasy stuff and uh, like content we really like. And D and D came up, uh, and he was part of a D and D group, and I got a lot of exposure from that. And then I talked to you, and was like, let's play D and D. I didn't even knew D and D existed, to be honest. Yeah, I have heard of like there's some nerds long time ago. Like in 1970 or something, mm. that played tabletop RPGs. I'm like, oh, well, that's because they didn't have PCs then, I guess. 
Yeah. And then I I think you told me there's something named D&D. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to read up on that. Then I download the 3.5 player's handbook and like, this seems interesting. I don't understand shit. Well, I enjoy so it. you started out with reading the 3.5 handbook. Oh, yeah, I did. That's what I did. Exactly. <laughs> uh, after you have left, I was like, I'm going to see what this is. That That's beautiful. And then in st- instead of the hassle of uh, 3.5... It ended up with us taking a, a five fifth edition. Yeah, the a wonderful edition. Oh, it's, it's yeah. very streamlined. Good. I to, really like it. Good for newcomers to the genre. Yeah, it at least it was very good for us. Um, it allowed us to play around. But yeah, we we so we were like, we talked about the indie. So, what did we do? We built a world together. We went on the internet and generated a random map of the world, a uh, world, and then we made up a fucking story about it. I still do that a lot. Yeah, when like, you're not around, I get that. Like, it's usually a thing I just do in my head, just like, "Ha, ah, this world would be kind of interesting." Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, I stuck with that world, and uh, we were like, Who, "Who's going to run the game?" And it ended up being me, and. Uh, you made a character, and uh, one of your friends from your uh, school made a character. It would be boarding school, uh, yeah. It would be called boarding school. Yeah, you you were sent away because your parents hated you. Yeah, that's the problem. In Denmark, we don't really have those. I don't <laughs> think we have really boarding schools. Yeah, but like we don't really have an English word for what it's called. Yeah, it's um, it's like an alternative kind of high school, I think. Yeah, it is. Well, in Danish, it's called. If the school, <laughs> which is literally after school, yeah, and you kind of weird, but essentially live there. And I mm. actually got some exposure to tabletop RPGs, but I never joined in because I was like, "Fucking nerds!" That's for nerds. Yeah, and I was focusing on hunting and mm. uh, diving, scuba yeah. diving and stuff. But yeah, so you invited one of your friends, and I, I remember talking to it about my girlfriend. She was like, "I want to join." I'm like, "Are you sure?" This is like she was like, "I'm gonna fucking join." <laughs> And like she like physically threatened me. I was like, no. <laughs> and that is when I like seriously found out my girlfriend's a fucking nerd. Well, I I can only say from my experience now is yeah. there's a lot of people who wants to play D and D. Like yeah. if I talk about that I play D and D, there's a lot of people just well, uh, do like I, a lot I, of people I, like I have heard about that and it sounds cool. Yeah, I also got a lot of people. Also, when I moved up here, people yeah. are like, um, "Are you gonna start a game? Can I join, perhaps, or something?" Yeah, there's a lot of people who wants to play. It. It's just, it's because it's, it's nerd culture. Yeah, what people think it is, at least. So a lot like, of people shy away from talking about it out in the open. So yeah, like we four got together at my parents' house. They were away for the weekend doing. Uh, they did like restoration of a house. And we played D&D and it was a lot of fun. And we all collectively fell in love. Not with each other. Yeah, but with, with the game, right? Yeah, uh, of course. Um, And then we met up here in Alba again and we played again. Yeah. And, we, and it was tons of fun. So 2.5 years. I've, yeah. I think it's closer to three years now. Yeah, not not yet. Um, It's uh, like not not yet because I haven't been with my girlfriend for three years. That, is that the way you're keeping track of it? <laughs> That's like the, that, these are the only like long term things in my life. <laughs> uh, I'm not good at time tracking, yeah. <laughs> which is fun when you DM. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, and then we added uh, another friend. And yeah, another I found I found a guy, and he was like, "Can I join your D and D game?" And like, mm. I don't know, I don't know if you fit. I don't know if the other wants to have another join. Mm. And I just went up to you. And just like sub, yeah. uh, so I got this guy who wants to join. Yeah, and I think the only thing we really need to take care of now is make sure we do not uh, go buy when we buy groceries for the game nights. We're not buying a pick because he's uh, yeah. a Muslim. Yeah, but uh, otherwise there's he's no problem. He's the fucking with best guy. I think we got a good set of players, and yeah. we're really lucky with our combination. We have been incredibly lucky. Yeah. Um, you hear a lot about of those horror stories of people who, yeah. who meet that guy, you know? Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of different types of that guy. Yeah, but uh, that kind of weirdo. But 
like I think it helped a lot that we we have been friends for like ten years now, right? Yeah, and we we have always known each other and like known each other's limits. And I think having us as the kind of core of this helped a lot. I think we were we were the core of this. this oh, yeah. t- uh, we still are, I think, to be honest. Like absolutely, uh, this gaming group. We're the one who keeping it together. I'm mm. I'm good at getting people together. I know that, but yeah. I'm not good at talking with people, or socializing, uh, and all that kind of intro stuff. word group. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's my speciality. Yeah, but yeah. So I pulled a st- few strings and talked with a friend of mine that he joined. He was the first guy who joined besides mm. me, and afterwards I met another. Um, mm. Hi, Marge. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then he joined, and now we are. A solid five-man group. We also have yeah. an on and off player. He's yeah, who comes by when he can. And yeah, that's fine. He's wonderful, and we have a lot of fun playing with. He's him. busy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, so he's good. Currently, I am finishing off our two and a half year campaign. Next time, we just finished our big boss, 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 big boss fight. There we go. Got finished, and big now we're boss fight. Yeah, exactly. Big bad evil ass boss boss fight. <laughs> And uh, we're doing an epilogue soon as our next session. Yeah. Ongoing with that, um, during the last uh, one and a half years, I have been struggling with mental issues a lot more than I have in the past 10 years. <laughs> it's a thing like I have always struggled with, but that really culminated and I actually tried to take care of myself. So I had, I couldn't prep nearly as much. And I got a lot more exhausted. And uh, who stepped up? This beautiful man. So we have two campaigns ongoing. And soon three of... I have I've soon have three or four, I think. Yeah, like uh, I have referred to a main group. Yeah. Uh, had, oh, oh. had two growing. Like I also have a family thing going. Oh, yeah. And you... I, I'm, I'm an on-off player there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like... Th- those are the two like main stable ones. I would say I have also been struggling with some heavy mental issues yeah. myself, and I had had a very hard depression. Yeah. But um, the thing that actually got me through it was playing D and D, which is it's my kind boy. it's kind of hilarious. But when I was at my lowest point, D- the only thing I I didn't attend s- high school, college, yeah. whatever you would call it, I didn't like, do jack shit. The f- only thing I did was prepping for next session. Yeah, like, and I was I wasn't even DMing there. I was just playing. Yeah, but that was what kept me together and also helped um, my social skills in that matter. Yeah, like I think a lot of what we have done, like working together, especially our uh, we recently uh, about a year ago started working on homebrew uh, stuff, and we have a repertoire of I think uh, ten uh, documents of and DM skills currently. Uh, yeah, we have thirty six. Yeah, in, in we to- have thirty six being worked on we have uh 10 uploaded so far oh, the 36 are nearly ready to publish just need some artwork yeah. and yeah, get, some getting stuff. like the editing done and stuff um, and then and on to play testing that that is a lot of what we have been doing and that has given us a lot of experience actually but we actually kind of made this small community from just starting out playing this little f- five-man group yeah and now we're just holding out together i don't know we write to each other daily I think. Yeah, almost. And I get a lot of questions. I don't know about you, but I get a lot of questions about D and D all the time. Yeah, now. reasonably. Yeah. And um, uh, <laughs> there was also a time where they asked me to. Uh, they would. Um, someone would like me to host a game for them. Mm. So they actually ask if I need to get paid for it. Yeah. I was like, I don't need that. I do this an, as a hobby. If yeah. I if I did it professionally, of course. But this is a hobby. Like. That if it were people that I was very good friends with, I would be like, no, give me some food and transport and it'll be fine. Like complete strangers, I would be totally up for like running games for money. No problem. Yeah, of course. But I think I have different experiences with that as I have done like teaching and stuff like that on the side and a lot of freelancing and writing articles and stuff. So... I I have dipped my toes in that water a lot more than you. Yeah, of course. Like, mm. if uh, you watched the pre-show, you would know he's the more technical guy and I'm yeah. the workhorse. Yeah. I make a lot of shit, he refines the shit. Yeah. We, we have a good dynamic on our work. So I think that's like our D&D story from beginning to where we are now. 
finishing off campaign and in the we are, middle of things in one? We are in the middle of mine, yeah. Yeah. Just finished the major plot issue or major storyline. A guy got cursed by a tentacle thing. Oh, he's don't ask questions. Okay, well, springing on when to the next uh, point, yeah. our D&D story slip. No, that is what we just covered. No, so no, no, the Kraken, the Kraken. Oh, oh dear. When we're talking about the cursed guy, yeah? Okay. So we had uh, we have this uh, player in our group. He's uh, he's very bold sometimes, and it can be fun, and it can be so less yeah. frustrating. So where we were, we were basically like at the edge of a TPK. He puts down an injured guy and walks away. A should, person... no, should know there's still a frost giant fighting them currently. Yeah. Four, out, out, four out of five mm. of the party members are unconscious. No. Oh, oh, three of three, them. Three, three out, out of five. five. Sorry. We had one woman carrying two of us with a teleportation thing that we could use to get out of them. And he put down the unconscious person and lift. And she looked at him. Can I get to him? The DM said no. And she teleported the four of them out of there. He was a lucky son of a bitch who managed to um, get the last uh, frost giant by himself. He knows there's a kraken currently awakening in yeah. an ice chamber. Still stuck. Our mission there was to get a uh, gem that was used to heat yeah. up this ice cavern that the kraken was frozen in. To be honest, the magic MacGuffin can, can all... Can one always say? Exactly. But uh, he thinks to himself, "I'm sure there's some magic items in there." Yeah. So he got up and got a rest. Yeah. He just Leoman's tiny, tiny hut. hut. It's it's a great spell. Yep. I hate it because I can't make night ambushes as good out in the <laughs> wild. <laughs> okay, in the <laughs> wild, it's not bad. I like one of my favorite moments um, was when you were running in my world. I think it was. Yeah. And. Uh, we were in a Leomon's tiny hut and was just surrounded <laughs> in, the in the morning. In the, in, the, uh, in the caverns. Yeah, in of, the caverns. Uh, the, the one shot I hold. Of Lacey, I think. Yeah, Lacey, yeah. 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 It was a good time. Yeah, Leomon's tiny hut is perfect. It's, a, it's an interesting spell. I hate it as much as I love it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so he, he got a long rest and she goes down again. Yeah. And he goes into an awakened Kraken who starts speaking to him. And he's like, if I'm just being smug, I can get the items and leave this Let's place. Let's note that he is a bard. Oh, yeah, th- we should note that, yeah. But he's a, he's a college of valor, so he's kind of more tanky. He's a badass bard. <laughs> so he goes in, he walks straight up. 10 feet from the one of the Kraken's eyes and he's just like I'm just gonna take these things and ignore you and then when he tries to run off he's surprised that the Kraken is taking him back <laughs> and he thinks oh get back here I can still try to escape and then he tries to fight the Kraken alone yeah so he, oh he, tri- he, he attempted to fight the Kraken alone yeah, um, it was stuck in place. It couldn't how move. How did that go? He ended up with one HP, and I remember him like, "Well, I didn't plan for this. I think I could easily get out." I'm like, "Dude, you were in the fight before. The most damaging thing was this Kraken tri- uh, being half a aw- half awoke. Yeah, kind of sleepy and tired. Kind of sleepy and just ah, flail- flailing around with its yeah. tentacles. I don't want to get up, mom. And now it's fully awake, and you expect it." Yeah. So, uh, how how did he get out of that? One HP, Kraken in front of him. What does he do? And he's he's still being smug. I I love that part. He's like, but I'm still useful. He's keep going to the Kraken, <laughs> and <laughs> the Kraken is like, you lit, you stole the thing that I precious the most, the thing to free me from these chambers. He's like. Eh, can't help you with that. Oh, you will. <laughs> oh, boy. And then he's just like, please don't kill me. And he ended up taking uh, on and saying, okay, I can help you get free if you let me live. And then he got cursed. It was... I, w- I was really sad. 
that uh, yeah. it didn't get to do more because you were really lucky. Luckily, in your we roles. got a magician to like cast remove curse, and there was a it 90 percent chance of failure. I would say. Sometimes the dice speaks in your favor. Also, <laughs> I am the most unlucky son of a bitch. Yeah, which when is which is wonderful. So let's go into our role playing chronicle or story of what role playing experience we have. Now, the reason why I have to separate from our D and D experience because I think our experience role playing is actually quite interesting and relevant uh, to us. I know, especially you. Uh, i remember you being very much in love with the game called Fable on the Xbox once. <laughs> Fable 2, yeah. Yeah. And like... Not the third. <laughs> Gosh. But like that game and Fallout and Mass Effect were a lot where you got that from and started falling in love with these <laughs> decision-taking games, right? Yeah, I played a lot of Mass Effect, to be honest. It yeah. was one of my major inspirations for... Just daydreaming RPGs or stories in general. Like uh, that game was uh, like that game on Skyrim were one of the like things that introduced me to this concept of what you do f- affects the world, and not in a what everyone does affects the world, right? But like where what you did actually mattered. Yeah, I think more so uh, with Skyrim and Mass Effect uh, rather than Fallout, as you mentioned earlier. Because as I remember from Fallout, I just almost got total murder hobo and just went out and killed everything. I wasn't a pleasant guy. I I had troubles playing Fallout because I was almost like, why can't we just be friends? (laughs) Also, I didn't enjoy walking that much, so... Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Like... The general consensus of us playing tabletop RPGs is he's uh, Jacob is either gonna be the dexterity dexterity guy or the f- party face talking everybody out or of combat both at situations. the same time. I'm more of the I'm 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 just gonna go in front and smash things in the head. Yeah, like we both have our preferred play styles uh, and different things. Um, and yeah, like. But a really fun story of our role-playing experiences was... Bloody? Yep. We were in a like junior club after-school program thing in what's basically middle school where there was lapping with like other people and... Oh, God. We, it was really weird. Yeah, it was a lot of middle and school like, thrown I don't, together. I don't know what system it was, but it like actually worked quite good. And I had a lot of fun. I like just think they made a system up. I've been playing yeah, a lot of that, LARPing otherwise, uh, yeah. besides that. Yeah, I think so too. I think like, I stopped about in my teenage years. Yeah. Then I didn't want to do it anymore because yeah. then I was a nerd. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, like I, I totally had wasn't uh, already. a lot of fun with that. And that was like my primary introduction to like improv acting or like being a character, like actually being a character. Um, more than just like reading lines from a script. I've been daydreaming too much. Yeah, yeah. Like, I live in my own head. Uh, f- fair enough. Still do. Like I, I got a lot of my experience from like doing school theater and musicals and stuff as well. Um, I hate yeah. going on a scene. That we are <laughs> complete opposites. Dude. I can improv as a DM, but I can't go up on a stage and just be like. Okay. I suffer from severe social anxiety. If I have to have a com- conversation with a total stranger, I get incredibly nervous. But getting up on a stage in front of a hundred plus people and having an improvised speech, no problem. It's really weird. <laughs> I would say I've been a dancer. You uh, have been a wonderful dancer. <laughs> at all those. Uh, like, like, I think we both have had that gene of enjoying making people react. Of course. It's always fun. Like, making people laugh and making people, like, impressed with things. Like, but, oh, God. I remember the most embarrassing dance. I had to do this um, school play. Mm -hmm. Essentially, my teacher was like, (laughs) oh, well, Eric, you're in a good shape now. Yep. Why don't we show it off? And then she just proceeds to go with tight black leather pants. And I have to, like, 
is this a BDSM fetish you're going on with me or what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I remember I deleted all the pictures as fast as I could. Oh, I'm sad. I um, hate that. Like, like I, I got a lot of my stage experience from music. Uh, when I was uh, nine, I started guitar lessons where I learned to play classic Spanish guitar. And uh, then I got like in the music school because we live in Denmark and parents want to clap at their children. My parents never went because they had work to do, apparently. <laughs> and I was embarrassed if they saw me. So uh. yeah. So I got a lot of my experience just playing in front of strangers from that. And just like that completely eliminated my stage fright. The same with like uh, oral exams and stuff like that. I was just com- like, I haven't felt it since. I think when we're talking about s- social experience and how mm. you feel about, like, I hate going on a stage in front of a lot of people, but I have no problem going into an oral exam. I have no problem just walking up to a stranger. I have a story like a few blocks from here where mm. I just went up to the bus station and was like, how you doing? <laughs> Good to see you. What you gonna do? Going into town? Yeah. I'm going to town too. Full Punched redneck him. accent and just proceeded to talk with him all the way. You're a wonderful <laughs> person. So, during school, I learned to do magic. Uh, like in magic tricks, right? Which to go with one of my friends. Card tricks? Yeah, and other type of things. Um, I especially enjoyed doing things that weren't cards, like putting string through my neck and pulling things out my throat and stuff like that. Don't worry about it. It's fun. Uh, the trick is called polo, and if you can find a performance of it, it's beautiful. Um, a guy swallows like one of those polo things and like rips it out of his throat oh. with a string. It's beautiful. Um, I love doing that, and a trick I really enjoyed was stopping my pulse. Like doing that as a finisher, just like okay, hey, you can feel my pulse, right? And just stopping it. It's beautiful. Uh, it got a great reaction. Um, but I found out I really don't mind approaching strangers when I have a trick to show them. When, I, when I'm when i like in my performing mode, I do not care at all. It's really weird. Like I remember me and uh, my friend, fuck. Um, we did magic together and I remember like us walking around and... Um, the city around my parents' summer house and just performing magic for random people for fun. Hmm. Yeah, that's why I'm I'm doing all those crazy story, all those crazy stories I have. They mm. ease every social encounter I have because I yeah. do so much random stuff when I'm alone, or when I'm <laughs> drunk, or when I yeah. just decide we need to do something stupid. Yeah, and they I could just call up on them because people seem to enjoy listening to stories. I experienced so far so when i suddenly once upon a time nearly got kidnapped by a pair of russians or what else stupid shit i've done like swimming two kilometers so the point that i'm getting at is that a lot of our role-playing experiences come from our real life right it a lot of our role-playing experience comes from us developing acting as a part of social situations as we both kind of suck at it, right? Oh boy! And yeah, we do. And we like pretend to be someone else to counter that, right? Dungeons and Dragons is basically play and pretend, right? Um, and to me, at least, D and D is just an extension of that. Hmm. You could call it that. Uh, like at at least that's how I role play my characters and stuff. I just get okay. I want. Uh, I want like the other the players to see me as a weird gnome who runs a shop okay so wh- wh- what i want you to know is that action over there it's 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 real real big but it has a small effect right so you see it it's long and circular right but if you take it and wave it around like this like this, and you hit a glass it gets filled with liquid <laughs> what liquid you ask not just water not be a salt water. Like, yeah, I'm not the voice guy. I'm not that good like, at it yet. To and me, I'm voices not... isn't the thing I 
like a, I do. To me, it's a lot of posture and gesturing and changing my speech patterns. Oh yeah, that certainly helps people immerse themselves in the story. Mm. Like instead of the monotone robot, some people sometimes becomes. That's correct. Yeah. I agree. Like that. That is. I remember when we started the session last time. I started yelling at an old player. Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah, because he was being like I started yelling at an old player character because he was being a secretive asshole, and we wanted to help him, and he wouldn't tell us what we could do, and I was very worried about him. He knew the consequences if he told you. Yeah, was certainly why he kept secret. But it engages people more when you really go in and make it. Like I, I don't think it. that scene would have been nearly as interesting if I didn't raise my voice, right? Yeah, I gotta agree. Yeah. It wouldn't be memorable, mm. at least. And uh, that's the thing you really gotta remember when you do this kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I remember particularly. Uh, one of you asking a random bard in a city about information and me just doing the background music and trying to do a freestyle song for fun. It didn't go good. I got information across and people laughed at me, but by God, it was fun. Yeah. Like, I think the point of D&D in general, just to have fun. Just like, yeah. Like, if you want to do it completely serious, okay. But I I like a mix of laughter and jokes. The thing people forget in RPGs is the game. Yeah. Right. I, think so. I am the game. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Uh, sorry, that's a funny joke to me. <laughs> As so, said before, I have no previous experience. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, our content stories. I think it's described as in the deck. Yeah. Like, we have together made D&D uh, homebrew rules expansions, right? Uh, and that is the primary thing you have done, actually. Um, That's what got me started, at least. Yeah, in, in where the DMing we, and world building and stuff like that. Yeah, where we have like written PDFs down with like rule text and stuff, mm-hmm. and that is some of the content we've created. Um, and you have streamed with me once, I think, and it was so much fun. And you should definitely do it more because you are great on stream. I would not say I'm the most charismatic person. At least. You were wonderful, but um, let's not get off topic yeah. here. Yeah, like so. Outside of uh, that, how much like creative work have you really done? Like not a lot. I am most certainly not the most creative person compared to you. You're a mag- musician and art- artist. Uh, I get bored a lot. Um, but when I get bored, I suddenly jump around half naked into town and jump into yeah. the f- uh, river. So, yeah, yeah, different kind of bored, I guess. Yeah, like, uh, this is the first podcast I'm doing. And so far, I'm loving it. And I would love to continue doing this. I do a lot of streaming. I have done YouTube videos and video editing and music. And I would love uh, to use that to get this thing together so like we can do this podcast and make it really good of course um you know i'll work for it but i'm just not i'm not a technical expert but to say the least you aren't brought in because i need technical expertise right (laughs) like you aren't my co-host because oh i wish i had someone who did obs better than me no you are here because you have knowledge and you work hard and you know what you're talking about also, you are really funny. The fuck. I have oh. weird taste in people, apparently. But yeah, uh, yeah, you kind of do. But yeah. But so l- let's r- run straight into like what's the goal of this podcast? So we have been talking about D and D and how why we love it so much, and that it's the most fun thing ever. W- why did we make this podcast? What was like our original idea? Just us two talking about DMing and having fun, right? Yeah, I think it was. Um, mo- most certainly, we wanted to just start peop- things up because, yeah, for for two and a half years ago, there wasn't a lot. I didn't see a lot of podcasts, and I yeah. don't really It know has definitely it. erupted. I have been a fan of podcasts for years, um, and I love the medium. Um, and we are both like, we have come to the conclusion, both of us, it seems, that 
the best way to learn is to do it by, by doing it, right? And then by talking about what you did with people who also did it and trying to find out how it can be better. Yes. And what mistakes you did and how you can fix those, right? Um, and that is kind of the primary goal of this. It is us sharing our experiences and talking with each other and trying to get better, right? It's a general learning experience, yeah. both for us and for those of you watching in yeah. general. The secondary goal is letting you learn from our mistakes. Oh, God, and I have a lot of things to talk about later. Yeah, like, I have always lived my life by listening to people tell you their mistakes so you won't make them, right? Oh, yeah. Um, And I think this is a good medium for that. We are both very experimenting people. We are very curious people. And I want to share experiences with the world, right? Yeah. And outside of that, if you can learn something from this, fucking great if i can make anyone smile from this fucking great right like it's something yeah like who cares mm -hmm. so yeah that's why we're doing this that's why we're being silly on the internet right isn't just the average person doing that yeah like well i think my point with this podcast is also talk about a bit of the things going on in D and and talk about what we think about certain topics and y yeah like the law uh, experimenting with stuff and like talking about homebrew please know D and yeah. wig it's like oh god bless my soul i am yeah, not religious like we would love to discuss like we have made homebrew and we would love to discuss that there are official material that we love like I finally bought Senator's Guide to Everything and I read it yesterday and it was amazing. It is there was so book. much cool stuff in there. Um, and now my favorite soul rogue is now up to date. Yeah. Favorite soul sorcerer rogue. Don't don't worry about it. Um, and yeah, let's like... Because we talk about this on our own time, right? No, oh, like, oh, yeah, yeah. All we Facebook just... messages back and forth are interesting. I'm not a very social person, but I need to have a subject to talk about. And D&D &D is a very good talk uh, topic for my yeah. case. And that makes me able to talk for hours on end. Yeah. Um, and like j just getting able to get... We often don't agree on things. Right. We are two polar opposites. Not polar, but very opposite indeed, right? I, mean, um, I would say polar. We're, we're, we're nearly complete opposites. Yeah. Um, but we have like found this place where we can listen to each other and talk together and get other viewpoints and agree to disagree. Oh, but I love still to find talk. out why like people feel like that, right? Um, which we have done discussing politics, which we won't do on this podcast. Nope. Um, we might do like a podcast where we just talk shit and have fun, where we might touch and stuff like that. But no, <laughs> no. Pol <laughs> in general, politics is becoming quite hostile. Yeah, environment at the like, moment. We both find it incredibly fascinating, and it's an important subject. But th this place is for fun and nothing else. Yeah, we're not gonna like, dwell into yeah. that. At least we are here for fun, learning, and hopefully not dying. And um, stupid questions from audience. I, I love those. Yeah. So, how to DM the world. How how was that title? Uh, uh, like, how did we come up with that? Because I don't think you were involved with that process. We, nope. had, we had a lot of idea generation. And we had so many names. And so much shit. And holy fuck, we have long lists of names we wanted to use. And we couldn't decide on anything. And we joked about how to conquer the world. I do that every first day. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I really like the title, so I remove conquer and put in DM. Because it it's kind of a silly title, right? It's kind of stupid. and But it describes us a lot. Yeah, we're not the most serious bunch. And we are going to talk about DMing. Also, just playing. also also in the title. I'm a genius, right? Um, so that that's where that arrived from, right? Yeah. Like no big philosophical meaning. It's 
It describes what this is. We will teach you how to DM the world. It's cozy. Your mom's cozy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can calm down. <laughs> what? I made a fun joke. Don't worry about it. So, yeah. Let's like do a recap. This is how to DM the world. We will teach you how to DM the world. We will teach you how to make mistakes and change them. We will tell you our mistakes so you don't have to make them. We got a lot of stupid stories coming yeah. for you. We will tell you our successes and try to explain why they were successes. <laughs> we have some of those, right? Yeah, a couple. Yeah, I, I think I have a few written down, right? Um, wh- why can we tell you that? Because we are an eno- enormous nerds who have a lot of role-playing experience. We are what uh, I think R slash D and D be behind the screen would describe as ripened. I do not know that forum, so I have no clue. Yeah, yeah, uh, th- that's one for the OGs, I think. I'm not sure, but yeah, we have some experience, and in general, if we can't teach you anything, at least let us entertain you guys. <laughs> Otherwise, I just end up talking about weird stories about what I've done in my life, apparently. Yeah. I also draw a lot of experience for those, to be honest. Yeah. Like, stories can come from anywhere and can be told in many ways, right? That is what, um, like, actually a lot of what I discuss in my Wednesday Wonders series I do on my stream, where I just talk about beautiful games. Um, and there's a lot of about storytelling and stuff like that in games uh, there. Um, and that is also a thing I will talk about a lot here because I find storytelling incredibly fascinating um, and I find stories fascinating I gotta agree that's what shaped most of our cultures and beliefs throughout time with mythology and religion like outside of that it shapes who we are right it shapes our personality oh indeed like um, I'm the kind of person who sees myself as a story right I have, like, an introduction to myself, like, memorized, line by line, right? Don't mind the cover. It's what's the inside that counts. See, you say that. But, like, my cover looks this way because it also tells a story, right? Like, I look like a long-haired idiot because it says something. Right. Um... People so, just end up drawing conclusion. That's what all people do. Yeah, and that's the fun thing. Oh, yeah. Like, th- there are a few things in my life I've enjoyed and most just being the long-haired guy who can fight. <laughs> right. Like, um, there's a lot of joy from that. So, I think that will be our first episode of How to DM the World. Yeah, I think. So... This will be up on our YouTube channel. If you are there, like, subscribe, share, do things. If you are on Twitch, drop a follow. If we were entertaining, at least. If not, then, like, tell us. I have a Twitter. I am open to feedback if you can try to say fuck at least once. Good. Um, what about some questions for Dungeons & Dragons? We, you can absolutely ask me questions about D&D on my Twitter. Yeah, I will go on long talks <laughs> with you. Then we could perhaps make some rants about it. Yeah, like da- down here is uh, my at Jacob ECR EC Jacob with a C E C H R. Um, you can find me there and talk to me. Under him, he doesn't have a Twitter. Nope, I do not. He actually does. If you can find it, you can ask him as much as possible. As I much have as you never want. used it, so he hasn't I had it open for years. But it's inactive by now. Yeah, um, I do all social media stuff. But yeah, I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, our next episode will likely be what will our next episode be? Should we start off with uh, our classes walkthrough? Start with barbarian. I do not think the oh, yeah. well. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's I, how I'm you all, sell him I'm on also some. F- always first to talk about. Tell barbarians. him to talk about barbarians, and he will go. <laughs> oh no, no, that'll be a too long of a rant. I think. I'll just go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you to the viewers for watching. Thank you to Eric for talking about things and being good at talking about things. Thank you to the big dog Roman Reigns for sitting in the background and being beautiful. Thank you to Slendy for being Slendy. Killed me. <laughs> you love me and you have enjoyed this a lot. Thank you for watching How to DM the World. Take care. See you later. Signing off. That's what I just did, you idiot. <laughs>